Right, back again, second vid for the uh, plant rule, so that's quite nice. Right, so how are we ready? We've got to do chain rule this one, look. So I've got product rule, but this is actually chain rule to do it. So I'm going to do chain rule within my product rule. That's quite nice, isn't it? Right, so remember, first bit, so I'll write it back up here. So first times second differentiating, second times first differentiating. You've got absolutely shed loads of, law, of laws to remember for differentiating, which is practice. So don't hit yourself over the head with it. Just use your pack and we'll make you find ones that look the same and just do that. Right, so first bit is a 3x. Second bit differentiated is a chain rule. So you're ready. I'm going to do it in different colors so it stands out. So differentiate the bit in the bracket is a 2x. Then deal with the bracket. So that will be four lots on the bracket to the power of three. So that's my chain rule done for that bit. Then, so first bit times second bit differentiated. Second bit is x squared minus two to the four times my first bit differentiated, which is 3. If I tidy it up a little bit, I've got a 6x, oh no, I haven't got a 6, I've got 24x squared. Oh, blind me. Uh, so I've got a 3 times 2 is 6, times 4 is 24. 24x squared, then I've got an x squared minus 2 cubed, plus 3 lots of x squared minus 2 to the 4. Right, now then, That'd be fine, that'd be brilliant if I was just differentiating it. But let's have a look, let's do a little bit extra. Let's look at some stationary points bits. Then. So stationary points needs to be factors. And the biggest factor I can take out is three lots of x squared minus two cubed. So I'll do it in two different colors so it stands out. So I'm gonna take out three lots of x squared minus 2 cubed. So if I take it out the first factor, that would leave me an 8x squared. Oop, come on, I still want blue there. And then if I took out 3 lots of x squared minus 2 cubed from the second term, it would leave me an x squared minus 2. Nobody likes doing this. Second years kick off like crazy when I'm when I'm going to force them to do some stationary point work. Right, why do we have to do it? The question doesn't say to find the stationary point. It's just really, really good practice to take out your functions. Just to practice your factorising. There, look. So this is for stationary points. You don't need to do it if it doesn't ask you, but it's worth getting into the habit of knowing how you can easily factorise it. There. <clears throat> so looking at that, that would have stationary points at plus or minus uh, root 2, and then this one would be, ooh, what would that be? So that would be uh, plus or minus root 2 all the through. Right, let's have a look at this one then. So I'll do it my way, not the completed packs way. So dy by dx. So I hope you've already got this one. So first bit, 3x squared. Second bit differentiated, 2x times 5, x squared minus 2 to the 4. And then second bit, x squared minus 2 to the 5 times 6x. <clears throat> so I'll tidy it up. So what we got there, 30x cubed, x squared minus 2 to the 4, 6x, x squared minus 2 to the 5. So that would be fine. That would be perfect. But well, let's stationary point it, because we like to factorise things. So that going back to the good old days. So if you look, you could take out a 6x, because that goes into the 30x cubed, and you can take out the x squared minus 2 to the power 4. So I'm going to do this all in one go now, because we're hardcore. So I've got a 6x, and x squared minus 2 to the 4. Then looking at the first term, 
So if I get rid of the x squared minus 2 to the 4, that goes. If I take out the 6x, I will have 5x squared. Is that right? Yeah. 5x squared. And then if I take out the 6x on the second term, on x squared minus 2 to the 4, I've got an x squared minus 2. There we go. So as a final answer, I would have a 6x. So that has a stationary point at 0. And x squared minus 2 to the 4, stationary points at plus or minus root 2. And then I've got a 5x to the 4 minus 2. So that would be like the fourth root, plus or minus the fourth root of 2 fifths when I was solving it. So there we go. That's nice and fun, isn't it? So the stationary point bit, just as a reminder, the stationary point bit is an add-on. So this is just an add-on. You don't get expected to do it all the time. In fact, to get full marks for just for showing that when you differentiate it, then you need to simplify it unless it tells you to. Right, so here we go. So we've got this one now. My word. So I've got an e to the 2x and a 2x minus 3 to the power of half. So I've got an e to the 2x is my first bit and the 2x minus 3 to the half is my second bit. So I've got dy by dx. Do not talk here. So first bit, because remember I do first bit times by second bit differentiated. Second bit times by first bit differentiated. So first bit is e to the 2x. Second bit is chain rule on this. So I've got to do chain rule within my product rule, which is nice. So differentiate the 2x minus 3 is a 2. Then deal with the bracket. So that's a half bracket power minus a half plus uh, 2x minus 3 to the half, so that's the second bit, times by the first bit differentiated. Remember when you differentiate e, you differentiate the power and stick it at the front. So that's just 2 e to the 2x. Right, so let's tidy this up a little bit. So the 2 and the half cancel. I've got an e to the x. I've got 2x minus 3 to the power of minus a half plus a 2e to the 2x and a 2x minus 3 to the power of half. Now then, that there would get me full marks. Well, you know I'm going to try and make it stationary points, don't you? So the e to the 3x is a factor. That's quite nice. Now I've got something over the square root of 2x minus 3, and I've got something times by the square root of 2x minus 3. So what I can do is I can try and combine them as a single fraction. And the fast way to do it, because this bit is on the bottom, is I multiply by on the top and bottom. So I'm going to do a 2x minus 3, so all of this gets multiplied by 2x minus 3 to the power of half, 2x minus 3 to the power of half. Now we haven't done this in the pack, and it beats trying to combine it as a single fraction in the good old way of doing it at GCSE Algebra. Right, so let's have a look. So I've got the top line all multiplied by 2x minus 3 to the half. So I've got an e to the x. Now this is a bit you've got to be happy with. I'm doing 2x to the minus 3 multiplied by, so this bracket multiplied by that bracket. So 2x to the minus 3 to the power minus a half times 2x to the minus 3 to the power of half gives me 2x to the power minus 2x minus 3 to the power 0. Um, so that would just be a 1 there. Then I'd have my 2e to the x multiply now 2x minus 3 to the half times 2x minus 3 to the half gives me a 2x minus 3 to the 1. So that's the top line, but the bottom line was a 2x was multiplied by a 2x minus 3 to the half as well. There. I can tidy up a little bit, um, but my time's going to run out by.